Hello, hello again, friends and loyal Wolfpack members. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous 2.2 beta server. And what we're going to be having a look at this time is the Orca yet again. But this time we are going to go and modify it up. We've already modified a little bit on here. Pretty much it's the same deal as with my modded Beluga video. Because with in this particular beta, we have to go to each of the individual engineers to modify the individual things that they specialize in. Last beta, when I was doing most of my modded series, we could modify absolutely everything from every engineer. So it's a lot more work this time around. So we're just going to be modifying out the basics. And I also just wanted to go and point out another change that's happened to the Orca. And that was that it's been upgraded from a 16 ton fuel tank to a 32 ton fuel tank. And this comes courtesy of Mikey Shaft, who actually reminded me about this because I did forget to mention this last video about the Orca. But oh well, we know it now, so let's move on. So what we need to do is we need to go and have a look in the engineer's workshop. And here we are, we are going to be modifying the engines, the shield generator, and the frameshift drive. Now, most of all, it's going to be the frameshift drive because we want to go and see just how far we can actually get this thing to jump. Because currently, with the 70-odd tons of cargo that we've got in the inventory, the 72 tons of cargo, we've got an absolutely paltry 14.39 light years worth of jump range. Why have we got cargo? Because the, the engineers are working for fish on the beta. So that's what we're going to be working with, because on average the jump range on this is about 17 light years. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and modify up the ship, sell, get rid of all the cargo, and then we're going to go and see what the end jump range actually is. So first of all, let's go and modify the engines. So what I'm thinking is we're not planning to go and have this ship be... A combat ship, so we're not expecting to be in combat all that much or be using all that much heat. So what I'm thinking is we might want to go for dirty drive tuning just for the sake of it. We don't necessarily have to have this, but I'm just really curious to see how it works. So we're going to go and generate this, spend one ton of fish, and hopefully we're going to be getting a mass reduction on this ship. So everything else is in the red apart from the optimal multiplier. So that's how well we're going to be going. And that's even getting maxed out. So there we go. Look at that. 17% up. That's beyond the maximum capacity there. And yeah. Okay. No, that's fine by me. I'm not complaining. So let's go and apply that. Next, we're going to move on to the shield generator. And what I'm thinking is... Do we have lightweight shields? Enhanced low power shields. What's this do? Power draw. Yep. Opt optimal hull mass. Reduce mass. Oh yeah, there we go. So we'll give this a go. Now, the reason we're going for this one is because it does give us a mass reduction. I'm just curious to see how it ends up going. But the optimal strength will hopefully go up. So let's go and see how this goes. So towards the upper end here, lower end... And yeah, no, that's not bad. Optimal strength is going up. So that's up to three. So our shield should be a bit stronger now. Oh, look at all that. Broken regenerate's gone down a little bit. So it'll take a little bit longer for the shields to regen. But we're losing 10% mass. So that's not too bad. So let's go and apply that one. Now let's go for the frame shift drive. Now what we're going to be going for is the best of the increased FST range. And I am going to go and end up rolling on this a few times, because currently, what are we on now? Now, bear in mind, we have been losing cargo, but yeah, 14.46. So we got a little bit more out of it, but like I said, we can't really tell anything yet until we get rid of all the cargo. So let's see how we do on this one. So mass is going to be going up, integrity is going to be going down, power draw is going to be going up, but the optimal mass, this is what we want. We want to get this maxed out to potentially have mass get reduced even further. So no, that's not perfect. So let's try again. We're gonna roll, I'm gonna go and roll this a few times until I get an ideal roll. So see you guys in a minute. Now this one isn't bad. We've ended up having one of the lowest mass increases we could have hoped for, and we're also maxed out on optimal mass. So I'm gonna go and apply this one. 
But I am going to go and roll a couple more times just to see if we can get something a little bit better. Okay, so I have gone and rolled with every single remaining ton of fish that we had, and this was the best we came up with, which was a reduction of 1% mass, but an increase of, or a decrease even, an optimized mass by 3%. So I don't think this is quite good enough to go and apply. So we're going to go and discard. So now we are completely empty of fish. Let's go and see what our jump range is. So I'm rather curious. 23.47 light years. So it's not ideal, but it's not terrible either. So at least we've managed to get the ship up to a respectable kind of jump range. Because like I said, we were originally at about 17 light years. So this isn't bad at all. So what I want to do really is go and jump out and go and see just how maneuverable this thing's gotten with dirty drive tunings. So let's go and find out. Okay, so here we are back in deep space. So what we're going to do now is check out just how quickly this ship goes from a standing start to fully accelerated. And I've got to say we're accelerating quite quickly and what I've noticed as well is our cruising speed is a very, very nice 364 meters per second. Now, if that's our cruising speed, I'm rather curious to see what our boosting speed is going to be. So we had about 440, 456 I think that was, that I saw top there. So let's see, it's 57, let's see if we can beat that. 8, 9, 459, so virtually 460 meters per second. So that's not bad. Now, what I want to go and see is how much more maneuverable this has gone. So let's get back down into the sweet spot. And go and see just how well this thing pitches. So this thing pitches very, very quickly and very, very nicely, especially with these dirty drive tunings. So there we go. And let's just go and see. Ooh, it's actually got very nice yaw as well, which is something I don't usually go and check. But I was just rather curious. So let's see how well we can go and do a flight assist off boost turn. So there we go, we can turn around and start going the opposite way fairly quickly. And I think if we need to go and do a turn around and run the hell away, that is going to be a good way of doing it. But yeah, no, I am kind of impressed with this ship, I've got to be honest. And it does handle very, very well, especially with these dirty drive tunings. And with a lot a better jump range of 23.47, it's really not bad. It's not got the greatest of space legs, because we managed to get the Beluga up to 32 light years worth of jump range. But the Beluga liner is a lot more expensive than the Orca. Now, the main downside to the Orca, I find, is that it cannot house fighters. You can't put fighters in the ship. So I think it makes up for that for having a much faster cruising and boost speed. So you can get away from whatever might be chasing you a lot easier. But anyway guys, that's going to be it for this video. We just wanted to have a quick look at a modified Orca. Now I'm not going to go and take this into any combat because we've seen that with the Beluga. Now this ship is going to be virtually the same. Apart from we've got two mediums and one large hardpoint. And I've got them all turreted on this one, and I'm not going to go and do the same thing, because I think it's going to work out around about the same. Now, feel free to tell me I'm wrong in the comments, if that's in case what you think. But uh, I do think that this ship is not designed for combat, it's designed to just run away. Because I don't think you're going to get much more out of it. 
But anyway, guys, I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Like it if you've liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Neither of those are good enough for you, that's what the comments are for. But I've been Commander Chaos Wolf, you guys have been epic, I will see you soon. And until next time, Commanders, keep flying, and stay shiny. Thank you.